There were many friends who asked how the electric vehicle I made for my father was made and wanted a video. I would like to share this video with you. Let's go to the video right away if you want. I used 30x30 1.5mm profile iron in the construction of this car. I'm making the foundation of the chassis in a very simple way. But first I set up the motor in a square shape. I'm building the rear part of the vehicle where the engine and differential will be connected. The length is long enough to reach the exact connection points of the differential. After marking the points where the differential will be connected with a pencil, I am crazy about math. Now I'm building the front part of the vehicle. I don't have any project in hand. I'm doing it all according to my own thoughts. This is the differential I use. I source 24,000 from it. There's a 400 volt brush motor with 500 watts of power. I replaced these wheels with... I will install a 13 size car wheel. I guess these are some of our friends comment on Broadway tires. They suggested I put on thin and small wheels, but since my father also uses this vehicle on Modi God roads, these small wheels went there. It gets stuck in the mud, it stays. That's why I specially changed these tires to big tires. Uh, otherwise it won't be sick, uh, it was impossible for my father to use it. When I asked for help from the wheel maker to put on a big tire, it was very... They asked for big money, so I came up with a system and acted accordingly. Yato, firstly... I am removing the current rims and tires. The original rims are two pieces. I also disassemble the original rims by removing their aluminum rivets. Then I tighten the alloy wheel nuts by attaching the original rims only on one side. The empty screws of the original rim perfectly match the holes on the car rim. I've made it up very comfortably this way. After preparing in this way, I easily fix the differential with big wheels. He didn't balance anything either. I'm fixing the chassis I prepared in a simple way with the Francie. I can bought more the materials I use from junk dealers by the kilo. This way costs are much cheaper. I use the sick natural gas pipe I got from the junk man again. I will use it uh, as a steering system. I cut it to the necessary extent. I'm going to weld two bearings into this pipe. I cut the bushing to fit right in the center of the pairing and I fixed this bushing with the soldering. The front wheels are again Broadway's Honuslu cream tire. Again, this vehicle has an original spindle. The that I prepared by cutting the spindle. In order to steer left and right, I'm adding a 30 by 30 profile piece onto the tweeters. These profiles here will enable left and right movement. The resources need to be really solid. So I was told that the beaten ones couldn't work horizontally, but my father has been using it on all sorts of roads for more than a year. I used it on very rough, muddy roads loaded with Tarlaya Garden, but I didn't have any problems. I am welding the wheel system I prepared to the chassis profiles. Thus, the wheels can move easily right and left. Uh, to make the wheels turn at the same rate, we attach two steering heads and steering arms. To give movement to the steering system, I use an old electric bicycle fork. I cut one side of this, only one side will move. I'm welding the arms I prepared also on the electric bike, but to the fork that holds the top. In this way, the wheels can turn equally to the right and left. Now, Mandieta most potinum. You know, I need to reinforce the front side a bit more. If I use it like this, it will be bent at the first stone. I am making a place like a small box to place the current ones. I want the seat I'm going to install in the vehicle to look a bit interesting, so I'm placing a few pieces so that the back of the seat will be high. I'm trying to give an ATV look by welding profiles on it to strengthen the front wheels, both from the top and from the bottom. From here I throw two cross irons so that both when moving forward and moving back if it hits a rock in any way to prevent any breakage. Since the 30x30 profiles are a bit thin, we add another profile on top of them to reinforce. So it becomes very sturdy. False. I am welding an electric bicycle handlebar to the jig I prepared. I am operating the vehicle I made to move forward and backward. I solder a potentiometer on it. Plastic handles are attached to the steering wheel. I'm painting the chassis before placing the batteries. I don't neglect to paint the rims and polish the tires. I'm, I'm connecting four batteries of 20 amps to the place I've prepared for batteries. Actually, two batteries are enough. These vehicles became 24 volts. I could use it with two ground wires, but I want to use it for longer to extend the distance. I tied four grounding wires. I get 24 volts by connecting two of these in series. 
Then I connect this group I have prepared to each other in parallel. Actually, I'm still getting 24 volts from four ICOs. I'm entering the engine connections of the vehicle into the engine driver. This motor driver that allows us to give the motors forward and backward direction at the setting we want. The motor and its driver will not tip for the rule well, we're not working. I checked the cables one by one. I joined and extended the broken ones. I managed to get it running. I can use this very comfortably. I will extend the cables and enter the potentiometer on the steering wheel. I will tape it with electrical tape to prevent the cables from scattering and to look good. And we wrap these cables around the steering wheel and enter the potentiometer. I put a button for the on-off switch. This button transmits the plus signal to the motor driver, enabling the driver to work. The unplugged cables are also connected to the potentiometer. If I push the knob on the potentiometer to the right, it goes forward. If I push it to the left, it goes backwards. There is no handbrake in any way and it completely cuts the gas automatically when you let go. It also brakes automatically. We're covering the Achilles. You shouldn't get any water or moisture in any way. Although the junk I bought was always under the rain and nothing happened. It must be quite sturdy. Yep. Yes, we have completed our vehicle. Now it's time to test drive. The car is very beautiful and became practical. It goes very well on a flat road. But when climbing grams, the rear wheels started to skid. So because the weight was more at the front, the rear wheels were not pressing too much on the ground. That's why I moved the batteries in front to the back. We can now go anywhere we want. It doesn't do a po at all. That's all for this video, friends. I hope you enjoyed our video. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like button, friends. See you in the next video. Goodbye.